saying that you are most welcome to Business Garage. My name is Martha. I come from Amazima, which is right there in Charlie Wajala. You're most welcome for Business Garage. Share that link. Come on now. Welcome to Business Garage. My name is Becky from Giant Killers MC. Share the link. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, guys. I hope you're excited. Oh Martha, are you I excited? I am very, very excited. Me too. If you did not watch Business Garage last week, it was amazing. Whatever happens to you, you have to keep going. Like the guy tried everything. Do you understand? He tried everything. So, this week, we have some drum rolls. We have Pastor Catherine Hamia from the upper room experience oh yes, my god yes i hope you're excited are you excited to learn i am so that so is excited story zamo is looking forward to guys so i really hope you all are but yes, in all yes, this yes. remember to share the link share, share the, the link, link share, share the, the link. link and now welcome with us the world the most amazing most anointed the amazing Worship team. <laughs> In five, four, three, two, one, let's go. Welcome everybody to Business Garage. Yeah. Together this morning.
under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield, church, and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor all of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Come on, church, go ahead and pray. Because the Lord has assured us that He is with us right here where we are right now. We are in His presence, and His presence is with us. Because He's with us, we are guaranteed of safety. We are guaranteed of protection. He is our refuge. He's on our every side. No fear, absolutely. No weapon, absolutely, formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that raises against you, He is condemning right now through your mouth. So go ahead and speak and prophesy that the Lord is with me today. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. My victory is guaranteed. The Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my strength. He is my rare God. No no pestilence, no darkness, nothing. On my side there will be 10,000, on the other side 1,000, but shall not come near my dwelling because the Lord is with me. A thousand may, may fall at one side, 10,000, but it shall not come near your dwelling because the Lord is with you. The Lord is in your house. The Lord is in that workplace. The Lord is in your business. Therefore your victory is guaranteed. Go ahead and give him a shout. Go ahead and give him a praise with a hand clap because he has secured and guaranteed your victory he has secured and guaranteed your business he has secured and guaranteed that your family all will be well he will deliver you he will honor you with long life he will satisfy you and show you his salvation because he's a good god he's an awesome god give him a shout and a praise if you know what i'm saying give him a shout and a praise if you trust in the lord give him a shout and a praise Yes, our God is good. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Business Garage. I am so excited to see all the people in the studio. Welcome, welcome. Say hello to your neighbor. You, they might have come in while you're praying. They might have come in while you're raising your hands and worshiping. Give him an elbow wherever you are at that location online. We are very, very excited that you have joined us this morning. You are very welcome. You may take your seats. Do not take it home. When you leave it where you found it, you will find it there next week. Otherwise, you are very, very welcome. I know among us, there is a very group, special group of people, right? Yeah? If you're here and you're joining us for the very, very first time, we just want to recognize you and celebrate you here at Business Garage. Just put up your hand and we'll give you a special, special Business Garage, welcome. Anybody here in the house at that location, at the hosting center? Yes, there's somebody right here. There's other people right there. Come on, neighbors, neighbors, you know what to do. Go ahead and welcome these people in a very, very special, special way at the location where you are. If you're joining us for the very first time, we are so honored and excited that you have joined us. And you're online. You could be at home or you're in your business and you, you, it's, it's your custom to watch Business Garage and you have people watching with you for the very first time. We are very, very honored that you chose to be with us this morning. You're very welcome. All right, Worship Harvest, why don't we tell our guests or remind ourselves of who we are. Who are we? A movement of the gospel, discipleship, and mission. And we're here for the sole purpose of catalyzing social, social and economic renewal in our immediate communities and as a result, the world. And we believe that church begins on Monday and Sunday is garage time. P, P, here at Business Garage, we are here to equip you, yeah? Because we know you're running businesses out there that are catalyzing economic renewal. Come on to the audience. Today you're going to work with me. We are here at Business Garage to equip you to catalyze economic Renewal, yes. So we are having so many stories in space on this stage that have changed so many people's lives, people who had given up business, people's businesses that had gone down during COVID, they have been restarted. Other people all took, had a shift altogether and started new businesses. So many people have been inspired with the stories shared on this stage. So if you haven't shared that link, 
please go ahead and share it and let people know we have yet another incredible story coming up. But before we get into the story here at Business Garage, I know that you came in the presence of the Lord with an offering, with a fast fruit, with a tithe, with something you want to give as a result of what the Lord has done, as a response of what the Lord has done. You want to say thank you. Anybody here who is ready to give their offering? Yes, you are. I know you are. So the, our guest experience team is going to come around waiting on you wherever you are, even at the location. They're going to come around with bags. You can ask for an envelope to put your offering to say thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Because everything we have in our hands is a sign that God has increased us. So whatever you have, offer to retice fast fruits. You can ask for an envelope. As the guest experience team is coming around, you can just put in an envelope and slip it inside that bag. And if you're online, of course, we won't have a guest experience team coming to you. But we have numbers where you can send your offering, your tithe, your fast fruit, or whatever giving. It could be towards the rise and build by the land. Yes, you can send to 0778-618-418. And if you have Airtel, you can use 758 618 418. And if you'd like to use Momo Pay, the MTN merchant code is 148722. The merchant code of MTN is 148722. And if you'd like to use Airtel, the merchant code is 116032. 116032. And it could be overseas and you'd like to give through our website. Yes, you can go ahead and do that. The website is Worship Harvest. Dot org forward slash give worshipharvest.org forward slash give and when you send all your tithe and offering it will be well received and as we do that this incredible worship team has a special for us as we give please help them feel welcome come on it's time for men and women to arise and pray Man of prayer, arise, arise before the day dawns. The Father, He is waiting to pour His love on you. So arise, man of prayer. Arise, woman of prayer, arise, arise before the day dawns. The Father, He is waiting to pour His love on you. So arise, woman of prayer, arise. Friends, in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, the Bible declares that Jesus, having woken up very early in the morning, early before daylight, he went out to a solitary place and there he prayed. Now, the reason why we do not do the things that Jesus did in public is because we do not practice what he did in private. <laughs> now, someone say, arise. Arise until we see the kingdom of God at work. Come on, say.
love on you right now arise woman of prayer arise the father he is waiting to pour his love on you Hi everyone, my name is Catherine Hamia. I'm co-founder, managing director, and chief steward, as I love to call myself, of the Upper Room Apartment. We offer an exquisite residential um, experience, coupled with peace, comfort, convenience, and elegance, all fused in one, and ultimately value for your money. We open our doors on 1st January 2021, when the world was on a standstill, no flight, no movement, but the upper room apartment one, because we have two apartments, but the upper room apartment one started on 1st January 2021. And uh, of course, we had our first uh, guest on 23rd January 2021. And guess what? It was a worship harvester. And of course, what we God has come to establish himself in, in the upper room. So if you want to take a personal retreat, a family retreat, a vacation, a vacation, please, the upper room doors are open for you and they are open for Uganda nationals, uh, regional and the entire world. And we are very, very excited. We are very, very excited. And just so to say that under one year, we are earned the super host status and this is a badge of excellence in the upper in in, in the airbnb um, business platform and and module and just recently this month as i speak this month of january we retained our super host status because airbnb uh, company found us worthy still to earn the badge of excellence because we are all about excellence so the upper room apartment is open for you, for your personal, for your family, uh, vacation, prayer retreat, worship harvesters, and yes, vacation, if you really want to come to that place of peace and comfort and convenience and value for money. So you're welcome. You're welcome. Reserve with us. Come to us at the upper room apartment. Thank you. Come on, let me hear a bigger thunderous hand clap and a warm, warm welcome for our guest today at Business Garage, Mrs. Catherine Hamia. Come on, studio audience. Yes, that's more like it. Yes, come on. I like the spirit today. I like the excitement today. Welcome, welcome, friends. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have just joined us online, you are right on time for our business feature today. And the story that we're about to bring you is extremely incredible. It's deep. It's hilarious. It has a lot of start, stop, continue. All of that is going to be in this one story. So if you haven't shared the link, go ahead and share the link. I have met a number of people, even yesterday while we were here. Somebody told me that whatever is mentioned at Business Garage is all I have implemented in my business and my business has not remained the same. So these stories you see here may seem like stories, but in them there's a lot of wisdom. So much wisdom and applicable ideas and things that you could go and put in, in, put in your business and it will completely, completely turn around. So share that link. Yes, do not get tired, don't get weary. Share the link, put it on your status. We found out that that actually works. People check the status, find the link and click. So go ahead and put it on your status. Otherwise, join me again to make welcome our guest today, Mrs. Catherine Hamia, all the way from the upper room. You are welcome. Thank you, Pastor Florence. Do you want to send some greetings? Good morning, everyone. Oh, what a blessing. It is. What a blessing. Yes. I bless God. You bless the Lord. I bless God. 
All right, so we have come into this story that we want to get to know more. First of all, I know that you've sh shared a little bit with me. So I'm sort of like, where are we going to start from? What are we going to say? What are you going to leave out? Everything, because it's all awesome and incredible. But I want to tell these guys, have you always been in a room? Did you just wake up in the morning and start up a room? Um, tell us about the, your background, where you've come from in terms of business or work or whatever, and then take us straight into upper room and everything you want us to know today. Thank you, Pastor Florence. Uh, Go ahead, of course. What is business garage without Kutumira? I'm my, I'm my father's daughter. Yeah. Yes, and I'm a hard follower. I'm becoming. So, um, I, I, in fact, my Kutumira is it's gratitude mm. and thanksgiving. Yeah. I would like to thank God. I'm God's testimony. I pray I don't cry. Yeah. There's no, you won't. joy. There's joy. Yes, I'm um, God's testimony. Um, so I praise God. Yeah. I bless him. I thank him. Then I thank my father, Apostle. Because he's actually responsible for the upper room. Wow. Completely. Completely. I have nothing in it with Pastor Stephen. Mm. Completely. It is Apostle. Come Apostle. on, studio audience, let's celebrate Apostle Mose. Yes, Apostle Mose, we send you shout outs and we are so, so grateful for you and your passion for business leaders and businesses to see them become bigger and bigger and bigger every day. Yeah, and also two people. Uh, one is my lovely grandmother. I don't know whether she's watching. She's, I call her a woman of substance. Mm. She's a hard worker. She was a civil servant. But I think I pray that grandma, if you're watching, I'm sure I'm bearing fruit. I am very Wow, fit. come on. And then lastly, I have my darling, Daddy Roger. My darling, Daddy Roger. There's a last, last one, but Daddy Roger. Mm. You gave me the gift of working, mm. of working. I worked with him two years, and he told me the only gift he would give me is to show me how to work. And he paid my school fees. Ah, Daddy Roger. I think you're watching. Thank you. Thank you. And I make you proud. And lastly, the husband of my youth. Hey. The husband of my youth. He's my Lord. He's my treasure. I, I fondly, some people know now, a few know my inner name. Now a pastor. I can't even just call him Stephen. Pastor Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. He runs with my dreams. I'm a big dreamer, but he's running with all the dreams. Some of them he's even surpassed me in the dreams. Yes. So thank you, Pastor Stephen, the husband of my youth, my treasure. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, come on, let me hear it for... Pastor Stephen. All right, Catherine, now that we're done with the greetings and everything, tell us your story as a business leader. Have you always been in business? Did you start out in business? Has it always been the upper room? Where have you come from with this idea? Um, in 2006, I graduated from uh, Macquarie University Business School. In my senior tour, I decided I'll be a businesswoman. Yes. Um, I love business, young as I was. I didn't know what it was, but yeah. I saw some of my family members. I loved it. So I knew that I would go to Macquarie Business School. I oh. knew where I was going, wow. and the Lord led me to Macquarie. In fact, even uh, I think the job forms, mm. I did not put anything in the main campus. But business. Everything was in moves, everything. And of course, I put a business administration, and the Lord gave me that. All right. And I, I did that for three years, so graduated in 2006, mm. headed out, mm. and um, I wrote my final paper, I think, on a Friday. Uh, my story is full of uh, divine enablers, mad faith, mm. hmm. mad mm. faith, yeah, yet to and hear about divine that. enablers, because it was even a divine enabler. I wrote my paper on Friday, Sunday was at Christ the King Church with my family, and I got my divine enablers, I wrote my paper, please yo, if you get me, I'm available and she laughed it off. Mm. So two weeks after that, 
um, she calls me and says, what are you doing? I was cooking. She says, put down what you're cooking. Get to my office by one o'clock. Mm. Yeah. Just a minute. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so two weeks. So I go to her office and she says, well, there was a lady at uh, a specific uh, point in the office. She, we have elevated her to go into another department. Yeah. We would like you to fill in. So I was, and she said, are you ready now? It was one o'clock. I said, yeah, I'm ready. She said, not a problem. So I went and took over the office. They took me through the, 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 that place you had to pick calls about 1,000 per day. And that was Umeme, wow. Umeme Limited, and it was at the main switchboard. I, it was incredible. 1,000 calls at a minimum per day all over the 1, world. 1,000 calls. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Talking. I don't know the accent even came. Hey, Pastor Mercy. Catherine, I don't think you, didn't, you wouldn't have enjoyed it. I'm so sure I, you I had too much fun. Um, so, uh, and I loved uh, my mentor then that I was taking over. She was a woman of excellence. Her name was, you know, on, on the third floor in Umeme at Rezori House was really a great name. So I had to make sure. I had to be early. I had to be at the switchboard by 6 a.m. I'm seated. I remember Dad Roger used to say, how are you? What, what are you doing? I said, I'm at work. I'm going to work. I used to live in Naguru where we used at 5.30. Yes. So as, um, as, as, as God does his things, the managing director, for some reason, took interest in me, asked about me, who is that lady at the switchboard? Mm. They said, she's an undergraduate, just finished her exam, said, I do not want to see her there. Get her something better. Massive. Wow. Yeah. I'm sure they were taking note of everything that you were doing. Passionately making 1,000 calls a day. Wow. Yeah. And that was uh, Mr. Paul Murray. Um, so I, they stopped me from work. I cried for two weeks. I'm thinking, what is happening? And they were telling me, no, we have to get where to fit you. So after two weeks, I think, uh, I, was, I had been trans, uh, transferred to Metropole House yeah. on Pilkington Road. And that is Umeme, the Umeme that is still there, I think, to date. And I went to commercial billing. So in there, I was responsible for producing your Umeme builds. Hey! Yes. <laughs> Data analyst, I enjoyed that one also. Oh, I went for mentorship in the field because before you produce the bill, because you see, we were receiving data from the meter readers, you need to understand how they do it. I, I traversed this city, went wherever with the meter, meter readers, and you know, I used to love it that I didn't have the airs that I'm an undergraduate because these guys were also graduates, mm. but they were doing their thing. Mm. So I went in the field, saw what they were doing, so I had a better understanding on how to analyze those meter readings that they're bringing in. Some of you have queries. So I had to be able, by the time we send to the people who print the bills, I, we were, that department in commercial billing was responsible to make sure that the, da the data is accurate, mm. that in case there are any mishaps, you, as, a, as a, a data analyst, you're able to retract that yeah. information. So anyway, uh, long story short, I was still there. My lovely dad, Roger, comes to me, says, I have an, um, there's this, uh, I'm going to start a company. Mm. But I know you're still young. Uh, think about it. Uh, he used to work in New Wayne, yeah. and he was in South Africa. So every time he would come home, he would bring us a lovely drink called appetizer. And I used to love it. So he said, you know that drink that you've been taking for a while? Mm. I said, yeah. He said, I have that dealership. I said, what? So what is it? I'm going to be distributing it in Uganda. I said, what? So I, I have to resign. I'll join you. He said, are you sure? But think about it. I said, okay, Dad Roger, I'll think about it. So I put in my resignation. The head of commercial billing calls me. We had a meeting for one hour. Mm. Why are you leaving? What did we do? Mm. What did we do? You're so young. You've just come in one year and almost a half. What is it? Then I told him, I'm a go-getter. Those days I used to say, and I was, I didn't know. But I, I, I'm very passionate about business. I want to join my uncle because he couldn't release me. He said, I will append my signature on this resignation mm -hmm. after I know what it is. Mm. That why are you leaving? People have been here for some time. Mm. You've just come. So I head out. Say, I bless you. It is okay. If it's what you want, you want to do. Go ahead. Yeah. So I went into the business world. 
sexual test, they did two years, and then had a doubt there's an opportunity. Because one thing, I've never looked for a job. That job looks for me. So I was in wow. business. Um, I was in business with my daddy Roger. I used to distribute uh, those drinks uh, across the supermarkets. I used to put on stilettos. I used to be smart and distribute the drinks in stilettos. Are you, Stephen? <laughs> met me <laughs> distributing <laughs> drinks. Yes. <laughs> so he wouldn't understand when we met, and you say, "What do you do?" And like, Okay, he understood, mm. but how do you distribute in stilettos? I said, don't worry. My friend. Yes. Because I, corporate, I was in the corporate world, came to the business world, and my daddy was very smart. Mm. So I used to carry cartons. They used mm. to have 24 tins. Wow. Yeah. And I, some, uh, some of the supermarkets would order for 50. I would carry one one in with my stilettos in until I finished. So you were the distributor? Yeah, we were in this country. Then you were the one who was carrying them inside? Yes, because we had no one. So um, as God does his ways, there are some supermarkets that would see me. Then the guys run to help me. No, 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 today we will help you, Kathy. Then they, but for some, they don't want to know. Mm. I even used to drive up to Ginger. I get Take my drink. Yes. Because, diligently yeah because the drink was very it was a lovely drink it is a sugar drink sugar so i drink. see why you were very diligent you believed in the drink yes <laughs> which is the truth yeah appetizer yes. you have yes. to believe in the thing you're selling the only way you're going to sell it effectively is to believe in it yeah yeah so i did that um, as I was there, my dad said, okay, because he was in petroleum before for a very long time uh, with Total. Then he said, there's this other business. I said, which one? I want you to be a business analyst. I said, I'm available. I entered into <laughs> petroleum uh, with him. Data analyst, I used not to like math. Oh, my God. But anyway, uh, business analysts, you have to look at the numbers. We had petrol stations, I think we had three. And then um, I had to be responsible to make sure that when you pack your cars for those pump attendants to put in fuel, you can lose, you can shut down your business in a day. Mm. It is possible in petroleum. Wow. Yeah, because either they will, they will uh, you know, t steal the fuel, or out of you know, negligence, mm -hmm. uh, th the fuel can spill. Mm. So all those things. And then it is the money. You have to open and close talk. So you can get in like at 10 a.m. and you say close. Close that day. Mm. What are you doing? You want to see the liters yes. that have passed through the pump are matching the, the money, money live. Mm. Then there were some intricacies. You can close. Then you ask the manager, where is the five million? Gayazuozeko. Petroleum mm. is very interesting. I had fun there, that Roger. Thank you. I had fun. I had fun. Drove to some. We had, um, we had an outlet deep down there in Dimo, Kalisi. So my uncle didn't sleep that day because he told me, can you drive into Kalisi? I said, I will go. I drove to go and, and analyze our stock. How is, how is the health of our, of, of our station? So, yeah. So, well... I didn't know what I was doing, but God from, was doing. So from billing, yes, I got calls, to, yes, drinks, petrol, yes, analyzing, analyzing, yes, yes. So in how many years was this? <laughs> two years. In two years, I did distribution and data and, and business analysis wow. of petroleum. Yes, yes, because they had said the only gift I will give you is to show you how to work. Great. And 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 I adore him. Mm. I adore him. He's a very hard worker. So anyway, uh, as I was there, because in fuel, like I said, you can't see close the business. You see it closing before it actually comes. <laughs> so my uncle smelt it. We, we had some issues mm -hmm. um, in one of our uh, stations. And then he said, he prepared me. He called me one evening, because you see, we used to stay together. Yeah. Live together, come back together. He said, you see, you're still young. Mm -hmm. I can't take you through this. We might be closing. What do you mean? We are closing. Because I didn't like numbers, okay, but I got the, the, the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, but I understood the business. Mm. So he said, you know what? You need to go back to employment. Ah, business life was so fun. I was like going back to desks. He said, you must, I, I really instruct you. Mm. Um, because for him, he loves businesses. I said, I can't take you through this. Start looking for a job. Ah, wow. Okay, so I said, okay, Dad Roger, I'll do that. So uh, even before the business closed and he was paying me well, he yeah. actually maintained my salary, Daddy Roger. He maintained my salary of what wow. I was earning in Umeme in these businesses. 
in the two years with him. And he was paying very well and timely. So anyhow, oh yeah, divine enablers come in again. I call yes. one of my uncles. I say, you know what? This is happening. He said, okay. I told him, throw for me a word in your networks. <laughs> throw a word for me. So one morning, I get a call from one of my uncle's friend. Mm. And who is like a brother to him. And he asks me questions. Questions, 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 questions. At the end of it all, he said, hey, okay. Call a kid. I'll call you back. Okay. The next thing I knew, I was called at uh, Buganda Land Board. Buganda Land Board. Still, there was a chair there. <laughs> I didn't know that that phone call he, he made was an interview. Wow. He did a telephone interview. But I remember one thing that when he was making that call, asking me questions, I answered, he was not saying anything. And like there was that separation. I knew him so because I used to call him Koja. But he was not saying anything. He was so strict. But I know he's a strict gentleman. So I didn't know it was a telephone interview. Anyway, yeah. So go to Uganda Land Board. He says, I go in there. I went in well. And then they said, there's this project. I did a certain project, which I'm proud of there. And uh, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful. I worked there for one year, and I think one month. So as I was in Buganda Land Board, mm. a divine enabler. Another opportunity. There was an opportunity in National Water. Aye. And... Uh, so, meme. Yes. Drinks. Yes. Petrol. Yes. Buganda uh, Land Board. Buganda Land Board. <laughs> yes. National, mm, water. national water. So, I, in fact, I have, a, I have a grandmom who once said, Name one, of course, the Mitongo baby no Sigaza or State House, something like that, <laughs> because it was so amazing. So, uh, yeah, there was an opportunity in national water, and this is what I experienced in national water. If anyone has ever done an interview in national water, you can do an interview in the world. Mm. Yes, Sarah. Because I did my interview in the main, in the, at the headquarters. And still, I was going into the commercial section. And they were all heads of what, what, what. I went there diligently, answered, because it was coming from inside. And amazingly, in Buganda Land Board, because I was in an IT department for that specific project, yeah. Where I was going, IT was mandate. I didn't know God. But now you're coming from business world and yes, business school. Yes. So God did it in such a way that when I went, one of the things pertinent questions was IT, even the systems. And it was amazing, the system they were using, it was a system I think that uh, Buganda, Land Board, Buganda Land Board was using. So I, I eloquently answered the question from the heart and my experience, and I entered National Water. And in National Water, um, I was uh, leading uh, commercial section billing again. I was responsible for producing your water bills that you disturb one from water <laughs> with that they are gonna the So shout outs to those who deny their bills. Yes. <laughs> so I was commercial billing officer. Mm -hmm. I was responsible for accurate <laughs> national water bills. Our times, mm -hmm. you could not just produce a bill. Mm -hmm. As a billing officer, you had to really know how those water units, I mean, why a customer must pay that. So I had fun there. And I was heading Bonga Branch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was in, as I was there, one year and one month in National Water. Again, one year and one month. A divine enabler calls me. <laughs> My Koja, who did that interview on the phone, yeah, who, who told me there's this opportunity, calls, calls you and says, there's this opportunity. I'm like, okay, um, this is the company, okay, make a call, go meet the uh, MD they would like to hire. Go and see. Yeah, this is this statement, my Koja. He says, no one has died. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, it is all. Because you're already working. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I had an awesome boss. I couldn't, because you see, I used to move. I used to love to move, and I was so excited. So I tell her, I have an opportunity in this place. Yeah. I would like to go and do an interview, telling my boss. Wow. My boss said, okay, okay, you can go. So go I went to the other side, mm. did so the interview. Resigned. 
No, I didn't resign. I was going to check out. So I went, I get there. The interview was about numbers. My former MD asked me about managerial economics. He had my thing. He said, in MOOBs, you did managerial economics. Now, what are they? come back. I'm like, who? I, I, I told him very frankly, I said, I would not lie. I don't remember anything in managerial economics. Then he said, okay, he did accounts. I realized that the position was more into accounts and I was not interested. I loved marketing because I graduated, I did a BBA major in marketing. Yeah. So I said no. So I give back a report and say, uh -uh, that it's job not is not for me. It's too much accounts. I'm not interested even to learn to get into it. I go back to my job in Russian Water. As I was there, after about two weeks, the finance and HR calls me, says, uh, Miss Catherine, we'd like you to come in. There's an opening. Wow. Please come back. Let's have a chat. So I go in there, they say we are opening up a new department, uh, in, um, it, which when, when they told me I was so excited because uh, this is in the coffee industry. And it is African now we are fine, in coffee. Yes, okay. African Fine Coffees Association. They, um, so what they do, they are market linkages. They bridge the gap between the buyers, mm, uh, the international and regional, and the coffee producing origin countries of mm, coffee. Mm. So they had, uh, they prep an annual coffee event where the whole world, they take coffee to the whole world and bring the world to coffee, to the origin African producing companies. Mm. I loved it. That is the thing I got. I said, no, this is now my marketing. I love this one. One so, of the things I've noticed in your story yes. is that everything you latched on to, you loved it. And you gave it your best and did it well. <laughs> yeah. So I remember calling Daddy Roger saying Daddy Roger, things were happening so fast. Mm. There's this job. What? He said, okay. What is it? What is the vision? Where do you see yourself? Then I, they said, I think you like it. I like what I'm hearing. I think go for it and resign. Then also called my coach. Said, okay, I think I like this one. They called me back. There's this one. I think I like it. Said, okay. No one has died. If you want it, <laughs> resign the other side. So I had to ask both of them. Um, so I resigned. When I, resi when I got to resign, I went to the head, the head of commercial billing, mm. National Water, Mr. Willie Nemoamanya. I send you greetings. If you ever fall on this, on this thank you. He was, uh, he was quite an incredible boss. I sat with him for two hours. Mm. He was asking me why I was resigning after one year and one month. Again? Again. He took me through, he, had, he asked me the vision of that place. Where am I seeing myself? At the end of it all, he said, write your resignation now. It was 7 o'clock. Mm. Put it in, I'll receive it. Then I go home. Because I think there's so much growth there even. We are going to miss you here. But it is well. I bless you. You go. You go. I put in my resignation and join African Fine Coffees on the 21st wow. of November. Are we getting closer 2011? to upper room now? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. uh, because so, I cannot win. Yes. So I go into uh, African Fine Coffees where I led and served for nine years. Until wow. July. Finally, you get yes. into a place for so long. Yes. Yes. And I'm very grateful for it. I went in different African countries. Coffee is an interesting commodity and product. Ah, yes. So after that, um, I think God did it. And uh, 2020, January 30th, we sign up for Apostle Moses SSFG Mastermind Masterclass. Mm. We joined with Stephen, and that is where light went off. So in the eight weeks, one thing was very clear. We had a mm. session with Apostle, mm. and he said, uh, you, you have to declare your assets and say, sweat the assets. So in there, in 2018, we bought an apartment with Stephen, and we bought a tenant with it, carried on the tenant, and our landlords were very excited. Before you get there, yes. I know that in between the jobs and upper room mm -hmm. and meeting Apostle, you had tried out a number of businesses. Yes. Yeah, yes. yes. You had tried out a number of businesses. I mean, it's all those jobs. There are yes. a number of businesses there. Yes. I and do, in I there is about something about I wanted to share mm -hmm. for the people who will be yes, able to I relate with you and sales. You did what? Cupboard sales. Car what? Boot sales. Car boot sales. Yes. Uh -huh. I used to import, I imported lipstick, lotions, Avon products. Was this when you were in employment at the yes, same time? in African okay. Fine Coffees. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, where I led the longest for nine years. Mm. Yes, so I imported things, sold to the ladies, mm -hmm. credit sales, mm. money comes late, and I was in financial foolishness. I ate the money. My financial director was, uh, was Stephen, asking, where is this money? I don't know why it was. 
yes. financial director is Stephen. Who is Stephen? My husband. Your husband. Lord. I yes. wanted him. Yes, to know. because he's good with numbers. So he would even do for me the projections. Mm. He would do for me the pricing. Mm. Me, I would import. Then he does okay. The numbers. And he used to do for me scenarios. Scenario one, scenario two, scenario three, or profitability. Best case scenario, worst case. Yes. Mm. yes. So I would see where to meet because sometimes clients are very price sensitive. Say, so, okay, given the products you have at bay, let us go with this scenario. Mm. But then you wouldn't see the money. Oh, oh, where would the money go? They wouldn't pay. They would pay, mm. but the money would mix. There was no separation <laughs> principle. I don't know where the money would be. Then uh, ladies. So then you'd go back home and tell him what happened to the money. <sighs> I've, I would pay some fees, mm. sort out people's problems. Not I'm the, I'm the boss. I own the thing. It's your I business. They pay me. I don't return with the money. I sold bed sheets from the state. So you left lipstick and then went to uh, bed sheets. Avon, when I bought the Avon products, the ladies were asking for what for Mark. I was like, now what is Mark? I said, now this one, let me leave this product went line. I went sheets. into bed sheets. I imported bed sheets. They said they're very expensive. Mm -hmm. 500 thread count. They want it less than 200,000. So my finance director is saying, so one time he said, oh, I imported shoes. I used to have, I think, the most expensive pumps in town. Hey. Say, oh, my pumps were 120. They have it. So all of this, we can see the money coming uh, out of the business. I, How do you get the money to start another one? He would invest in me. The financial director. Yes. We send you greetings, sir. <laughs> He would invest in you, make new projections, yes. and you run the business. Yes. yes make exactly. scenarios, you run the business, there's no money, yes. he invests again. Yes. We send you greetings, yes. Pastor Stephen. So I think uh, the last straw was when I bought shoes, imported from both UK and US. The shoes became shoes. The shoes were so expensive, but very quality. I love quality things because they don't grow old. So anyway, he put, he woke up one morning and said, stop importing in this country <laughs> because the house was full of things. He sent a Taziraba. Women, Banange, ladies, I send you greetings. Who buy things and don't pay after one year. It is bad. Mm. Credit sales. He said, there is no way you can do business. Mm. And you're doing credit sales. Where is the money? Because my book used to have October, what, December, January. But you saw the things in March. Why is this person paying in October? Anyway, so anyway, as, as it is, I, that stock, I even, I, I, I took it to church. And the gave it away. Shows, I, get, I got out of that business. He said, do not import anything until you sort yourself out financially. <laughs> Nothing is sent at a ZD then I went to Tebasasula, then the stock. Anyway, I stopped the cardboard sales, but I did a series of, of businesses. Wow. And I loved them, mm. all of them, mm. all of them. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, fast forward, SSFG, sweat the asset. Sweat the asset, we are landlords, we are happy. Mm. How do I sweat the asset? I'm already sweating it because we have tenants. So in that class, there was a couple, Divine yeah. Neblas, who took interest in that class. They said, we want to have a cup of coffee with you. Mm. We had you have they an apartment. The class with you. Yes. We said, yes. Oh my goodness. We had that meeting. Light bulb had already gone off by Apostle. So now we meet these people who are doing something incredible in their spaces. And they said, you have an apartment. What are you using the, the tenant for? We're like, what do you mean? They're, they're tenants. They're giving we have us a money. tenant. We are earning. Said, no. Um, and actually, after that meeting, COVID hit. We couldn't move. So at the end of COVID, when they lifted up for people to move, one of them, uh, the, the wife came to our space. Anyway, before that, light bulb goes off. Then I and Steven start saying, we need to give notice to this lady. She has to leave. We have to sweat the asset. Yeah. Because in our meeting with our divine enablers, they said, do you know that you can upgrade this thing to a fully furnished apartment? Airbnb. And list it on Airbnb. We had never had, I think, I don't know whether I'd ever heard of Airbnb. But I was like, my God, who does that? Because at the, thing, at the back of my mind, I was like, this is costly. But they said, no, it's what we do for a living. Yeah as a business and at a large scale. So we said, okay. So end of um, lockdown is lifted, cars are moving. Um, she comes and visits us. She was amazed. She said, this is a golden place. If I was letting this thing a night is $100 minimum, mm. I'm like, what? She said, you guys, this, is, this gold. is gold. And before that, as we were trying to contemplate giving notice to our lovely tenant, she was so lovely. 
trust. So lovely, and paying on pay. time. Mm. Mm. Paying on time, three months advance. Eh, guess what? In July, when the president lifted, people yeah. are moving, yeah. we are planning. She comes, she gave us one week notice. I'm moving Suddenly. Out. We were happy as landlords. It was an answer to prayer. We're like, this is cool. So we were so happy. July, she heads out. So August, our friend comes, sees the place, says, you guys, this is marvelous. Uplift this place. She even started a visioning. The colors. What? What? You, like, you have to list this thing. Do not put a tenant here. If you don't have faith, yeah. ride, ride on, on my, my faith. faith. That was her statement. The Mobiros, we send you greetings. We love you. We love you. We love you. Our former classmates. Yes. So what we did, so that journey, because my husband is a numbers person. Again. By profession. <laughs> I don't know. Meticulous with numbers, envisions numbers. The journey began. Mm, for the upper room now, now. For me, the dream I had, because since I was a young, I really wanted a part, like to build houses. But my idea was too late. I didn't about this other sphere of upgrading the spaces. Yeah. So he knew my dream. And for some reason, he saw that I was actually seated into the dream was coming real. So he supported me, but then he, he said, the money, where is the money? How this we time, where is the money? Yeah. He's how not investing going, this yeah. time. Well, how are we going to do this thing, Kathy? I told him, I don't know, but I know that our elders said we ride on their faith. And I know one thing for sure. Yeah. I am going to list this place on Airbnb. So long story short, ah, divine enablers. I was following on Facebook a certain lady, Maureen, Maureen, our elder, a divine enabler, Motia Interiors. I was following her, you know, lazy, lazy yeah. on Facebook. I liked what she was doing, nice things, what? So Stephen asked me one day, I think in August, who is going to do this place? Mm -hmm. Then for some reason, God brought Motia Interiors. That's when I said, all along Maureen is Motia. I didn't know they were the same people. And she's in worship harvester as Only well. to realize she was a worship harvester. I said, there's a worship harvester. He said, what? We made a meeting. Planned a meeting, we sat. Then I said, we want to upgrade this place. What, 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 what? But Stephen, in his heart, he was like, where is this money coming from? They gave us BOQs for the, for the project bill. Mm. Oh, because I dreamt. We dreamed, Maureen. So you do the dreaming, she does the numbers. He does the numbers, but I dreamed so big that even Maureen said, okay, because it's what she does. She said, this is beautiful. I like this space. This dream fits so well. But the numbers guy was wondering where the money was because that <laughs> cost, that cost. So anyway, uh, she drafts the agreement. Mm. When she drafted the agreement, the story, my, my investor started saying, this is too much. We can't sign things. I think we should get a tenant. I said, no, we are not getting a tenant. We get a tenant, we don't get a tenant. This, because the cost for him, it was, was the so numbers. High, yeah. The numbers. So as God does his things, I just told him, you know what, Stephen? I promise I'll recover every shilling. Meanwhile, all of this talking and planning mm. is during the lockdown. Yes, lockdown. Where the world is don't not even moving. need Airbnbs. Yes, because even our contractor, Maureen, said, but wait, guys, you want to do this thing now? We said, yeah. Where are the customers? Where? But I said, the world is not moving flights. What? Because, of course, Airbnb, the first thing that comes in is the tourism. Yeah, yeah. So said, well, you got, but, you know, she said, okay, I mean... The, the client has spoken. He yeah. said, I'll do it. I love this. This is interesting. Yeah. So anyway, uh, contract is signed, not signed. Contract signed, not signed. Series of meetings until I Finally. said, oh, you know what, Stephen? I'll recover every shilling. Just help me invest. Because he had invested before. He had, he had wounds. <laughs> in the boot sales, I think all those things were coming together. Wow. But at the same time, he knew my dream of mm. real estate. Mm. And he was seeing it and Now this time come to pass. And yes. And also because we had some resources that were specific. Because we are farmers, we have a farm. Mm. And we had resources that were specific. 
to that farm. There's something we wanted to do at that farm, and we're waiting for the lockdown to ease and what and do it. So it was in, and also because we had started drinking from Apostles' Cup Financial yeah, Wisdom, yeah. we were attending, you know, because the class was after we had attended breakfast financials here and there, mm -hmm. and we're like, net worth, the story of net worth. For us, the, now, the digits were not fitting on the what? Yeah. On, the, on the calculator. <laughs> when the first time we did net worth with the Apostle. <laughs> they were not fitting on the calculator. I, no. Uh, negative over what, what? It's even bad in, in dollars. It's like the, it couldn't come, it couldn't bring, you know. So anyway... Um, Syntax error. Yeah. So now that uh, Stephen, for him, he had already elevated because we had started drinking from mm. Apostle's financial cup of mm. wisdom, he had, and also the previous mistakes he was seeing through me doing yeah, businesses yeah, here yeah. and there. Uh, so he said, we cannot, and he's a bank as well, we can't channel resources from a specific purpose to something completely out. And what I loved about those resources, they were fitting the bill. Oh, they were for straight the to the room. point, to the dot. Mm. Now, me, I was very confident. So I said, please, but anyway, the Holy Spirit helped me. He said, let us sign this thing. And of course, Oh, also, thank you so much, Pastor Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, you're investing in another venture. So all through this, we are having talks with our divine enablers who are doing the same business. They were taking us the pros and cons. Because he's a numbers guy, he was... He was in the vision. Mm. What helped me? Out of all these interactions with our divine enablers, he caught the light. Mm. When he did the numbers, this time they were out of When this we world. have listed on Airbnb, because we hadn't yet, mm. we, because the works had not, he had depended the signature for the contractor to begin. Mm. He ran with the vision. Nandeka. It became his. He <laughs> saw the numbers, the projections. Eh? Because now, for, when there is no lockdown, mm -hmm. he, was, he just did a clean slate when he there is no the lockdown. Mm -hmm. hey, he saw the future said, okay, it is well. Let's do it. It is well. We shall do this thing. And that is how the upper room opened its doors on 1st January when there was no car moving, no flight coming in. We opened our doors. Right at the time when people are saying they cannot do anything, yes. they are at home. You open a new yes. business. What I like about this point and this particular business is that you had tried a series of them but did not have the right financial knowledge. Mm. So you had so many losses, mm. so many debts, mm. so much stock lying in your house, and then you went through mm. a financial class that helped you figure out things and manage your resources better as an individual mm. and as a business leader, which I think now from this point when you start Upper Room, makes it a success. So tell us about Upper Room. Is it another business that you're about to tuck away and try a new one? Tell us how is it doing number-wise, income, profit, all of that. How is its performance since you even opened it in the lockdown? Because there are many people who wouldn't open business at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So we opened up uh, on first. It was a glorious day, and then our first guest walked through our, made a reservation. It was a very interesting reservation. I send you greetings, Pastor Passis in Nairobi. Come on. She was our first guest on the 23rd of, of uh, January. And in there, there is something that was very clear to me with Stephen. It's like the Lord came. Mm. Because there's a story about the name, the upper room. In November, October, between October and December, Apostle was teaching us from the book of Acts. Mm. I had never read the book of Acts. But during that time, I loved chapter 1 and chapter 2 of the book of Acts. So when Stephen had agreed to sign the contract and now had bought in, he said, what is the name of this business? So we were thinking, thinking. He was standing, I remember vividly, and he just said, the upper room. And when he said it, I had just read out oh, that season a saying, and I remember Apostle he said, guys, it is wise people read the book of us and Pastor B3 because we were doing MC Live. So I just said, the upper room it is. He said, ah, oh, Kathy, I was joking. I said, no, it is the upper room. So you started the upper room yes. last year, you said July? In, in Jan. In Jan. Yes. 2021. Yes. So tell us how its performance. How did it do number-wise? How many clients did you get? Is it profitable? 
Tell us about the apparel. So by December 2021, we had hosted 21 guests. Wow. And at a, in a year where there was a series of lockdown, yes. open lock, open lock. Yes, yes. And in, in Airbnb business, we have some dry, we call them dry seasons, where there are no reservations made. And of course, anything that hits the economy anywhere, mm. it hits. But there's just one thing that Apostle is teaching us, and for us from the mastermind in, 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 uh, in 2020, it is that we are kingdom people mm. and kingdom businesses. And that is our story. For us at the upper room, we don't know whether there's a lockdown or, or one, not. Because people were coming in the lockdown. And Ugandans, amazingly, we celebrate the Ugandans. Yeah, and because we have, uh, we also offer vacations. So you people, come. vacations where people just choose you to come work to from work, mm. but in a different space. But you know, you have all these things that comfort, the peace, the joy, the elegance, you know. So the vacations, vacations. So, yeah, so we are kingdom people, and we believe that for us at the upper room, we are open and we are in business all year long. For the, 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 the natural, does doesn't not really touch you. us. It doesn't. Wow. Yeah. So Come we on, had, let's celebrate, yeah. Pastor Kathy. So we had 21 guests at an occupancy of about 37%. And just to say that when we, we it hit us, that the money that we are earning out of tenancy module, you are earning we, it in a, we, we earn it in six days. Wow, the money you are earning in a month, now you earn it in if, six days. If we had days. a tenant yes, in the house. in six days it's completely. We earn it in six days in the upper Wow. Room. We earn it in six days. Come on people, celebrate with me, Pastor Kathy who has shared her story with us. From her story, we learn and see so many things. Number one, work ethic. She really, really has shown us the pattern of great work ethic, which has given her so many opportunities. The second thing I learned from you is that part when you start different businesses and what caused them to fail was poor financial management, which is what happens to most of us. You get the business, it becomes feed, feed my family. You use some of the money for personal things and then some of the stock is not sold and then the numbers are making sense, but the the profit is not there because we've mismanaged the money well. The other thing I learned from your business is that nothing was limiting you. Even in a lockdown, you started something. And I know that most of us, that excuse was, I can't start something. So as a walk of faith, once you had this, you believed in it, you started to implement immediately. And I'm thankful for supportive spouses like Pastor Steve who said, okay, we've had fails, we've failed, we've failed, but we are going to start again and invest in this. And you're still giving it your very best. And then being in the right space, because being in the right space is where you find the right people who will be able to open your eyes to opportunities you'd rather have not seen when you're on your own. So you went for these masterminds, all these financial spaces where you found all these people. Thank you so, so much for sharing with us and for teaching us. Yes, you are there struggling with your business. Join a group of people who are doing business or who are teaching about finances, who are coach, find a coach, find a mentor, find a trainer, because in there, there could be the solution of why your businesses are not working, so that when you start again this time, you're able to do a much better job. You're able to lead well in your business. All right, then, Kathy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you. If you're ever around, where is the upper room again? The upper room is situated, and maybe as I close, uh, Apostle teaches us that never waste a crisis, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So in the 45 days lockdown, of 2021, we opened up a second upper room a second in upper the lockdown. Room. Yes. So we have two upper rooms in uh, Nali Exclusive Nali Flats, Kira Lane, after TMR Hospital. Just uh, after TMR Hospital, as you're coming into the estate, there are just those flats by the roadside. Mm. That is where the upper room apartments are situated. And you are welcome. Yeah, that's where we are. And we sleep where our money is because we stay within the same complex. We right. always. And I have seen so many people saying that the place is very beautiful. So if you're ever looking for Airbnb, go ahead and check out the upper room. All right, before we close this broadcast, I know we are way out of time. I do not want us to leave without giving somebody here an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're a studio audience or you're watching online, but you've never received Jesus, somebody could have invited you or you just click the link, but you've never received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. I want to give you this opportunity to receive the best gift of them all. All this talking we have, and the story we have had is a story of faith and pe the people God sets our way to cause us to succeed. Sometimes we're struggling but all we need is one person and only and only God can do these setups 
that lead us to people who lead us to our destiny. So if you'd like to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, all you have to do is say these words after me. Just say, Dear Jesus, I come to you today to receive you I, as my personal Lord and Savior. Take my life and do something with, significant with it. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you are Lord. In Jesus' name. Come on, if you receive Jesus, if you say that prayer, you have just received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And we want to help you make sense of the decision you have just made. What you can do is go ahead and call that line that you're seeing on the screen right now or send us a WhatsApp, send us a text. There's a pastor on the other side of the line and the number is 0772 642 Just go ahead and call that number, send a text and tell the person, the pastor on the other side of the line, I have just received Jesus, and they will help you make sense of the decision you have just made. If you're watching at a location right there where you are, I know there are people who will help you walk this journey that you have just started today. Come on, people, let's go celebrate Pastor Kathy. Celebrate her. Thank you so much for coming, Pastor Kathy. We are very honored that you came. Friends, see you next Sunday right here at Business Garage. We will have yet another incredible story that will encourage you if you have failed to start again, but to start again even bigger and better. See you next Sunday. For those who are here, if you'd like to stay for the encounter service at 9 a.m., go ahead and stay. If you're watching online, yes, stay right there where you are. The service will be starting in a few minutes. See you next Sunday here at Business Garage. Bye-bye.